Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's show where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is John Burick, and today we have a very cool thing. We have a cool thing that is definitely worth waiting for. It is the brand new 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, if you are watching us live on Facebook, you have a unique opportunity, which is that you can ask us questions live. Uh, Social Pete is here to take your questions, take your comments. Uh, we have spent a little bit of time with the MacBook Pro, but not a lot of time, so we can answer a little bit of time questions, but not like, oh, if I use this for 18 months, will it break? I don't know. I don't have a time machine, but we will try to answer your questions. If you are on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. Uh, we have a new One Cool Thing every day. Sometimes they're not quite this cool but often they're pretty cool. This is really cool though. Um, John, I'm looking at these two MacBooks. Are these both the 2018 model? What's going on here? Why are they identical? So we have the 2017 model. I believe that's the one on the left. Aha! Yes, and the 2018 here. You can tell by the sticker on the bottom. Which one is it, Sasha? That is the 2017 model. Okay, we got it there. All right, so 2018's over here. Looks pretty much identical, but um, what we have here is actually a maxed out version of the 2018 model, which um, we maybe could let the studio audience figure out how much this works out to. So yeah, let's talk about comparative specs. Now, the, the 2017 MacBooks were created criticized a little bit, and we're going to get to the big criticism of the 2017 MacBooks in a bit, okay? Uh, the they were criticized a little bit for having, you know, year-old Intel processors, mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Has that been fixed? That it has. Uh, we actually have Coffee Lake in here, which is the current 8th gen Intel core processors. The big difference, though, regardless of the generations, is the number of cores. And here we had two cores. We've doubled it to six cores, uh, excuse me, four cores here. Six cores are actually in the new MacBook Pro 15 inches. Mm -hmm. So um, going from two to four cores is actually a fairly big deal when you're uh, going generation to generation. So we did a little bit of benchmarking this morning, excuse me, and um, we have a pretty interesting story to tell from that. Tell the story. What's what the story? Have? So I'm just taking a quick peek at my cheat sheet over here, but we ran um, a few um, benches that are very CPU heavy. Now, on this machine over here, we got a Cinebench score of 597, which versus a score of 381 doesn't mean a whole lot in comparative terms, you know, just as a number, but when you're making a uh, almost 50% increase in raw CPU performance, that's a pretty big deal. Wait, a 50% increase in CPU performance between the 2017 and 2018 models? Right, and this is just in one test, mind you, and it doesn't necessarily translate into every program, but this is a test that is hitting all the cores in the system at once. And are these, very hard. are these models, are these units in relatively the same place in the hierarchy of MacBooks that they were before? Well, the thing is, is that uh, yes, they are relative to each other. This machine here is a lower spec uh, version of what it is versus ah. this. So there is a bit of other, a bit of sway in the actual configurations there. But to see that much difference generation to generation in a uh, you know a model that's in the same family that has to adhere to the same thermal limits mm -hmm. is pretty impressive. Okay, so let's let's walk through. Uh, we can customize the 13-inch MacBook here on Apple's website, and that will help us walk through the specs. And you can talk about which of the specs here have changed vis-a-vis -vis the uh, 2017 MacBook, and sure. then we'll get to the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is that. All right, so what do we have here? This is the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So what we actually have in hand is a um, 2.7 gigahertz Core i7. Okay, so. So that is a four core chip versus the two core possibilities that were in the 2017. Okay, so it's a $300 option to go from a 2.3 gigahertz i5 to a 2.7 i7. That's correct. Uh, memory, uh, 16 gigs is what we have in our test unit. The base model has eight gigs, as is the base model in the 2017. Okay, and now that memory is not usually user upgradable, right? On Mac, correct. It yes. is. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. That is correct. Yeah, okay. So buy, you know, buy what you want right from the outset because you're you're stuck with it. Okay, storage. Okay, um, two terabytes, which is a new maximum. Whoa! That is a lot of cash, isn't it? That um, is, yeah, it's, 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 a <laughs> lot of, it's a lot of storage cash a of, and yes. a lot of money cash. There is that, yeah. So $1,200 uptick to go from 512 to two terabytes. The maximum you could do on the 2017 was one terabyte. So if you do a lot of local processing of very large media files, you're going to love that. Of course, your wallet won't, but um, that's all good. If you do this stuff for a living, you now have the option to have two terabytes in one place, which you did not have before. So now, so now we have a thirty-seven hundred dollar laptop because we spec'd it all the way up. Right, that up is what from, we actually have here. Yes. Up from seventeen ninety-nine. Seventeen ninety-nine. Yeah, so okay. we've uh, more or less doubled it. Yeah, but this okay. is the this is as good a uh, thirteen-inch MacBook as has ever been offered, and that you can get today. Looking. Mm -hmm. 
you know, at it right here. Okay, so now let's get to some of the more controversial aspects of the MacBook line. Number one, ports haven't changed, right? We're still on all USB-C. Yep, yeah, USB-C with Thunderbolt 3, um, you can connect your external storage, assuming you have a converter, but um, yep, nothing's changed in that aspect. You don't have any of the type A ports that, um, you know, so many folks look for, but that's been MacBook uh, way for a while. No type A ports, just type A people. Uh, now, if we, now we get to, of course, the most controversial aspect of the MacBook design, which is the keyboard. Uh, I have a rant up on YouTube that is in part about how much I hate the 2016 and 2017 MacBook keyboards. They are abysmal. They are the worst keyboards in the industry. And they are so bad, in fact, that uh, many people speculate that they are defective because Apple is currently running a keyboard replacement program for anyone who gets dust trapped in their keyboard and can't get it out. That is this keyboard here. And now what you notice about this keyboard is that it's very flat, it's very loud, and it's very hard. Your fingers land really hard at the bottom. And for a hard typist like me, that can hurt after a while. It's frustrating. So now we go to the new 2018 keyboard. And I'll type a little on it. I'll tell you a little what I think. And then, John, you can tell me what Apple told you about it, OK? Mm -hmm. So now, I'm typing on this, and the, the thing that strikes me most about it is that it's still shallow. You don't have keys with great throw, but it feels a little softer. It feels a little softer on the fingers, and it sounds a little softer. So I was able to, I've been typing on this this afternoon, I'm able to type faster and more fluently on the 2018 keyboard because it's a little softer. Now, what did Apple tell you about what they changed about the keyboard? Not a whole lot. Um, frankly, they've calling, they're calling it a third generation keyboard and they're claiming that the typing is quieter. They have not made any uh, claims about any changes to the mechanism or anything of that sort, but all we know r basically right now is that is what you hear, is that it's quieter. It's definitely quieter. I would say it feels a little better. My big question is, is it less defective in terms of getting dust in it and that sort of stuff? And yeah, and that really is uh, only time will tell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Sasha and I were looking at this before. We were looking at it at an angle and trying to tell if we could see anything really different. I thought maybe there might be microns less clearance around each of the keys, but I don't want to make any assumptions based yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Is the top case tighter? We can't tell. Maybe. Right. And given that the... Um, uh, one of the issues with the previous gen keyboard was that apparently particulate matter was getting underneath the keys and getting into the mechanism. The fact that there may be a very, very minimally reduced amount of um, space around the keys might help mm -hmm. alleviate that. Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Let's start taking some questions. Is there a particular way you would test that or is that just going to be through, you know, over the course of reviewing, you're just going to see whether any of them get stuck? Oh, in terms of the keyboard, um, I mean, we'll be hammering on it, that's for sure, but um, there really is not a particular keyboard testing regimen that we put our notebooks through. I mean, the thing is, so I've seen, you can do things like bury your keyboard in sand or dust, but we that? tend not to do that because we tend not to do, uh, we tend not to do obviously destructive tests on our loaner products. Right, and most people don't do obviously destructive things to their keyboards, and if mm -hmm. they do, they deserve what they get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not about to pour water on the keyboard, that's the thing. There yeah. is that. Let's take another question. To clarify, are you able to upgrade these after you've bought them? No. Nope. No. Buy what you want right from the outset. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are not upgradable, although, although there was one other point made at the Apple event, right, about eGPUs. Yes, well, that is a whole different story entirely. And okay. actually, um, Apple at the event showed off a um, uh, eGPU, an external graphics card box that was uh, manufactured in concert with Blackmagic, known for uh, Mac storage products. It goes in through Thunderbolt 3, through one of the Thunderbolt 3 ports over here, and it'll get you up to um, Radeon 580 graphics, mm -hmm. which are, mm -hmm. you know, fairly respectable. They're not, you know, up in the uh, top end of gaming graphics, for instance, but the idea there is that you just plug it in and go. The box comes with everything pre-installed, which unlike most mm -hmm. eGPUs is not the case. It's usually a very DIY kind of thing. So $6.99, that's going to be in the Apple Store, and you just plug it in and go, and it's really, I think, mostly uh, meant for the 13-inch um, MacBook Pros, because the... 
um, larger ones are running dedicated Radeon graphics already, so you'll only see a minimal uptick. Yeah, so, I think when you think of upgrading the, the capabilities of these, you're basically talking about adding external components, whether yep. it be external SSDs, external GPUs, that sort right. of stuff. Yeah, and eGPU stuff just came in with um, mm -hmm. OS updates in the last year or so, mm -hmm. so we're looking at a very uh, new kind of category and really only one sort of plug-and-play product right now that you could plug into one of these, being that black magic. So it'll be interesting. We're going to try and get one of those into test, and it'll definitely complement this nicely. Now, let's take another question. Can I edit 4K video? Of course. <laughs> For $36.99. Also, that's like their whole business. Mm. Like, there is that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the MacBook, if, if a MacBook Pro couldn't edit video, Apple should stop selling Macs. Because like whatever I say about the keyboard, you know, like the editing video is kind of their 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 almost their like their reason for yes. being at the moment. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now let's talk a little about the screen because there's been there's been a subtle alteration to the screen, right? Yes, that's right. So we've um, seen the addition of uh, the True Tone functionality, which I believe Sasha, you may correct me on this, uh, came in with one of the iPad Pros. Yeah, uh, it started with the iPad Pros. Yes. yes. Okay, so um, what it does is it sets the white point on the screen depending on the ambient light in the room if it's activated. So you may be able to see it, or more likely not, given that it's going through a camera and the internet and your monitor. Actually, what we're hap what's happening here is that the studio lights, uh, I think, are preventing the true tone from kicking in. Uh, is that what it is? Okay, yeah. so I could hover over it with my body to create shadow, but I don't <laughs> think that would be a very good aesthetic, appear uh, aesthetic experience for you. But trust us, we did see it in normal, non- blazing lighting and you do see a difference in the color temperature when it's off you see more of a blue cast when you have it on it I notice more of an amber cast mm -hmm. let's take another question to clarify some of the models too is there there's a core i7 there's a core i9 shall we walk through some of the models we here on the screen that. Yeah, okay okay yeah so there's 13 and 15 inch macbook pros right and among the 13s you have your i5 and your i7, right? Right, and those are both quad cores. Okay, okay, and then if we flip over to the 15s, then, and I love that we man managed to configure a $6,700 laptop here. Yes. Um, so if you flip over to the 15 inch, you have an i7 and an i9. Right, and both of those are six cores. Okay. Uh, the uptick actually from the uh, i7 to the i9 isn't the big part of the 6699 price you see there, that was actually only a $300 upgrade. It was more the four terabytes of storage, which uh -uh. you can now get on the uh, i, excuse me, on the um, on the 15 inch, you can only do two ter, only, I put in quotes, two terabytes on this, but that was what really bumped the price up big time. Yeah, so if you want to be editing your 8K video, then <laughs> you're talking your 32 gigs of memory and your four terabytes of storage here. Right, yeah, and I mean, a lot of content professionals want to have all their stuff local, as opposed to having to plug in a, you know, a RAID, you know, array or an extra, a large external SSD, and that's sort of the market that that goes for. The yeah. content creator who wants local files and a lot of them, or very large ones. So yeah, that's what was announced. Two processor variants of the 13-inch, two processor variants of the 15-inch for a total of four processor variant units. Yes, I think that is correct. Yeah. yeah. Let's take another question. Do any of the models have a touch screen? No. Uh, the Mac operating system does not support touch. Therefore, Apple does not sell any Mac products that have touch screens. Um, Apple has a a uh, long-standing philosophical objection to crossing the streams between uh, the Mac OS and iOS and believes that iOS is where you should be if you want a touch screen and Mac OS is where you should be if you don't. What he said. Okay. Um, but, uh, and, and that actually goes over to one comparison I wanted to make, and we're going to make a bunch of comparisons now, interesting comparisons. One comparison I wanted to make is that if you do believe in crossing the streams, you have kind of one of the top competitors to this, which is the Microsoft Surface Book 2. Mm -hmm. And what do we get if we configure a Microsoft Surface Book 2 to about the same specs as, I mean, do we, we want to do, do this the, one? Yeah, we, do, we could do the, up, the, the uptick one. Yeah, okay, okay, great. That. Right. So we're a 13.5 inch. Yep. Okay. Core i7. Core i7. Okay. We're bumping okay. up to an i7. Which i7 do we have in there actually? Is that a um, quad or a dual? Do we know? Let's see. Hmm. Ah. Ah. All right. Well, we'll uh, find out when we get further yep. down. I, are we're 16 gigs? Uh. We're, well, uh, as we have it. Uh, as we have it. 16. Yeah. 16 gigs. That's right. And yeah, you can only go up to one. We have two. Yeah, you can only go up to one terabyte. So there you go. They, we don't have the two terabyte option. Now we're up to 29.99, and it's. Basically, the extra terabyte of storage is what makes the difference. Yeah, four or less. And um, I'm, again, not sure if this is a yeah. uh, Coffee Lake or a, uh, 
earlier gen Ooh. version, so it could only be two cores. We uh -huh. could probably uh, verify that before you yeah. uh, sort of uh, throw any judgments on it. But um, yeah, I mean, you're looking at, roughly speaking, assuming you're looking at the same processor, you similar prices. Similar prices, similar but you can't. Prices. But you can't ceiling. You sort of the ceiling is lower on this one. Right, yeah. but mm -hmm. but the Macs, of course, they run Mac OS. They are thinner and lighter than the Surface Book. Mm -hmm. They have potentially more storage. The Surface Book has a touchscreen and it detaches. Right. Yeah. Two yeah. very different animals. Yeah. Very very different. Now um, now one thing, another thing I like to point out is that Apple also has lower end laptops. They have a non touch bar 13, and they have mm -hmm. these MacBooks. They didn't update those, right? That's right. Yeah, so the, this was where things got a little confusing with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Um, with the 13-inch MacBook Pro without a touch bar strip along here, nothing changes. So you still get it only with a dual-core processor. And it starts at $1299, which is $500 less than the $1799 starting price of the touchbook. And that still touch has this very bad, painful keyboard that hurts my fingers. Ah, there's yes. that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then similarly with the 12-inch MacBooks, which are kind of like the super duper ultra mega portables, right. we're yeah. still waiting on an update for those. Right. Those have not changed. They still pop out of dual core, and uh, yeah, they are uh, as they were before. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, another thing I wanted to point out is that so up until about 20 minutes ago, I, I am I am considering recommending this to my friends, even though it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Up until about 20 minutes ago, I was recommending to all my friends that they get a 2015 MacBook Pro. Yes. Because it's the last one with USB-A ports and a good keyboard. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is, I believe, a fifth gen Intel that processor, is right? Correct, I believe. Yes, yeah. Broadwell. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a that's a Broadwell. And uh, now Apple, as of yesterday, took those off the market. You can right. no longer buy them from the Apple Store, but you can buy them from places that sell used laptops, like MacOfAllTrades.com. And I'm finding that the base model, which is 8128, not a lot of storage, is 849, which is a very reasonable price for a good laptop. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I mean, who knows how long these will be hanging around? I mean, you will probably find refurbs on the market indefinitely. Yeah. But um, you know, as with anything, when you're buying a refurb, oftentimes you know there are different quality levels, there are different uh, grades of. Um, you know, refurbishment. Sometimes they're A, B, C quality. So it'll just you know it remains to be seen. You know, sort so, of how these how much these will stay in the market. But this opens up this opens up a big question because so we had the earlier questioner talking about 4K video, and if you're editing your 4K video, you want the fastest processor you can possibly get and a lot of storage. Yes, if you're editing 4K video, then ignore this web page because this is the eighth gen machine you want. But mm -hmm. for basic laptop users, right, who are doing like. Google Docs, right? You know. Well, seventeen ninety nine is a starting price on something like this. Uh -huh. That's already way overkill for someone who's doing very right, right, basic right. tasks. I mean, frankly, if you're looking, if you but gotta if you just go want Mac, a Mac, I mean, you could go with the twelve ninety nine uh -huh. um, non touch bar version of this. Uh -huh. You could also go with one of the MacBook Pros. Uh -huh. Actually, I mean, one of the MacBook non right. Pros. Um, there are other options. I mean, the but the I guess Air. I'm saying is yeah. is the it, it would would a used twenty fifteen model. Would that be fatally slow? Is a is a fifth gen Intel processor well, now? I mean, for everyday tasks, is going to be perfectly fine. I mean, okay. again, if you're browsing the web, you're typing Word documents. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, honestly, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference, you know, day to day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this again is a media production. Yeah. Type what were of they? Monster that we have here. You were at an event when they were showing this monster off, and they were showing it off like in the hands of various professionals who were using it, right? That's so right. Yeah. What are the industries where they said this this increase in performance would be important? Important. So I mean, uh, photographers who are dealing with large files, raw files, things of that sort. Uh, video editors, of course. Musicians who are processing um, a lot of, say, soft synths at the same time. You know, within something like Logic. Um, Academic uh, computing, where you're mm -hmm. dealing with very large data sets and you need the CPU power to crunch through them. Mm -hmm. People like that. Um, that's not your, you know, average student who's watching YouTube. And uh, just in case, uh, just in case you've come in late to this Facebook Live video, I'm going to do a little uh, keyboard noise comparison again. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the older, louder, harder keyboard. And now show the softer keyboard. I 
I think there's definitely a difference there. I think you can hear it. I think you can feel it. It doesn't turn it into a cherry MX brown, but no, certainly not. Yeah. but <laughs> it's 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 at least better than 2017. Was. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was uh, saying to Sasha before when we were first messing around with these. There's a little more of like a metallic element to this, or to the older more, one. Yeah, to the old one. Yeah. Whereas the newer one, it seems a bit cushioned. It seems a bit softer. And if you're typing on it all day, I will tell you that's really going to matter. Uh, any more questions out there? Okay. So uh, this is the new uh, MacBook Pro, the 13-inch model specs from how low up to $36.99? Uh, from $17.99 from the base model. Uh huh. Yep, to $36.99. Okay, from $17.99 to $36.99. There's a 15-inch model as well, which specs up to $66.99. Yes, we've uh, just determined that for yeah. a ridiculous amount of SSD storage. Um, I guess we are gonna review it over the next couple of weeks. Yep, yeah, we're gonna be getting the uh, benchmarking completed probably Monday, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to have a review up of this of the uh, middle of next week, or thereabouts, if not sooner. Terrific. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing with the new 13-inch MacBook Pro, new keyboard, new processor, lots of new innards. Looks the same, but don't be fooled by that. Uh, Thank you all again. Uh, we will be back on Monday with another cool thing for you.